A recent quote from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has been making its way through the news and social media platforms. Housing isn't a primary federal responsibility. Of course, this quote sparked some heated debates online and it brought up more questions like, if housing isn't the federal government's responsibility, then whose responsibility is it? And what can be done going forward to improve housing affordability throughout Canada? In this video, I'm going to try my best to answer those questions and more, and at the end of the video, I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on what can be done to improve housing affordability. My name is Jessie McClellan, and I'm a realtor here in Oshawa, Ontario with the Lisa Abbott team. If you want to stay up to date on everything that happens in my market, which is Durham Region and the GTA, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you find this video helpful, please hit that like button to help me reach more people like you. So I know getting into topics like this can really fire people up and bring out their enthusiasm on the current political landscape in Canada. I encourage you to voice your opinion below and engage in discussions with others and I'll be replying to comments as well as long as they're kept respectful. I'll give you my thoughts at the end but I'll also try my best to provide you with information as fair and unbiased as I can throughout the video. We'll start off with the quote from Justin Trudeau that sparked this conversation. He said, housing isn't a primary federal responsibility. It's not something that we have direct carriage of, but it is something that we can and must help with. He continues afterwards to say that it will take all levels of government working together to improve housing affordability in Canada. And he's correct on that but we haven't seen much cooperation between levels of government. A lot of what federal, provincial, and municipal levels of government have had to say has been passing the blame around on each other rather than working together towards any sort of solution. When I was reading some articles on this press conference, I came across a good point that was brought up in a CBC article that said the constitution or legislation sometimes explicitly states which level of government is responsible for a particular issue, but that's not the case with housing. Which is why you have all levels of government blaming each other for not taking enough action, while they also continue to also not take much action. So with Trudeau saying that housing isn't a primary federal responsibility, he's not entirely wrong, but let's take a look at what is a federal responsibility and is directly related to the cost of housing. Interest rates are controlled by the Bank of Canada, mortgage insurance is controlled by the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, and mortgage rules are controlled by the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions. All of which are federal corporations or agencies that play a role in housing affordability in Canada. And if you go back to 2015 and look at what Justin Trudeau and the Liberals promised during their election, it sounds like it is a federal responsibility, or at least it was at election time. It said a Liberal government will restore federal leadership on affordable housing by investing in a comprehensive national housing strategy. The national housing strategy included investments in affordable housing and senior facilities, tax incentives to renovate the supply of rental housing, financing for the construction of affordable rental housing, repurposing federal lands and buildings for affordable housing, changes to the home buyer's plan, and to review escalating home prices in markets like Vancouver and Toronto to keep home ownership within reach. And how'd that work out? Now, I won't pretend to be shocked when a politician's statement change on a subject over time, but going from here's all the things we can do and will do to it's not a primary responsibility and something we have direct control over is quite the jump and you can see why that might cause some people to feel like the current government is out of touch with the problems Canadians are facing. Another thing Trudeau argued was that the current Liberal government is doing a better job at tackling affordable housing than the previous Conservative government. Both the current Liberal government and past Conservative government implemented several policies and actions to address the affordable housing issue, including tax credits and incentives for buyers, as well as funding for different affordable housing and rental projects. And you could probably argue the effectiveness of those actions and policies all day long, but let's take a look at what happened. Stephen Harper served as Prime Minister from 2006 to 2015. During that time, the average price of a home in Canada rose 40% over that nine-year period, equaling a 4.4% gain in home values each year. Justin Trudeau has been Prime Minister since 2015, and during that time, the average price of a Canadian home has risen 71%, or about 8.9% of growth per year. 
Now it's easy to look at those numbers and say clearly homes were more affordable and price growth was more sustainable during the conservative government years. But to be completely fair to the situation, while they both had to navigate different economic situations, the effects of the world shutting down for COVID and the ripple effects that it's had since cannot be overlooked. Canada isn't the only country to experience housing, affordability, and inflation issues, but when taking a look at how Canada compared to other G7 countries' home prices during that time, Canada's home prices stood out amongst these other countries. So while I disagree with those who say that we wouldn't have affordability issues if it were a different government running the country during that period of time, I do believe that there were things that probably could have been handled differently that maybe wouldn't have allowed it to escalate to the point we're at today. With all of that said, the question that remains is what can be done to help housing affordability? The answers aren't as obvious as many people would think. As I mentioned earlier, there are interest rates, mortgage insurance, and mortgage rules, which are all at the federal level, but all changes have other consequences. You can lower interest rates, that would take some pressure off homeowners who are either on a variable rate or coming up to the end of their term and due for renewal soon, and that would allow buyers to qualify for a higher mortgage amount. But we've already seen what lower interest rates will do, and we've seen home prices increase rapidly, even when the Bank of Canada paused rate hikes for a few months. So dropping interest rates would almost certainly cause home prices to increase and quickly. The government can look at introducing more buyer incentives, changing the stress test or the guidelines that banks follow when they're approving people for mortgages, again allowing them to qualify for more money. But removing or lowering the stress test can increase the risk on banks and lenders, and any scenario where you allow buyers to qualify for more only adds more demand to the market and will cause home prices to increase. The popular suggestion amongst Canadians right now is about the number of people that Canada is allowing to immigrate here each year. But drastically decreasing that number has other economic effects and no other political party has stood up and said that they believe that's an issue or that they would change the current targets. The next federal election is two years away and we've seen what's changed in just the last two years, so it's anyone's guess where interest rates, inflation and home prices will be at the time. Here are my thoughts on the issue. One is that the small snippet making headlines doesn't tell the full message she was trying to get across, but at the same time, it's also true that the quote comes across a little out of touch with the current affordability issues many Canadians are dealing with and isn't what they want to hear. I think many people are tired of listening to a federal government blaming the provincial government who are blaming the municipalities and cities, and it goes on and on in a full circle. There's part of me that thinks it would almost be a slam dunk for the first political party that steps up and takes a firm stance on affordability and has a plan to change it. But the reality is there's not many options besides either offering incentives and policy changes that only add to the buyer demand or make policy changes that either take buyers out of the market or force more listings onto the market and cause home prices to fall. And so much of Canadians wealth is tied up with the values of their homes. Doing so could be political ruin, so instead everyone wants to kick the can down the road. There isn't a scenario where this is solved overnight. Reading what developers and industry experts have had to say, the biggest challenges developers face when building are the regulatory barriers and costs and the lack of labor. I made a video not that long ago that talks about the cost of building a home in Toronto and Vancouver being hundreds of thousands of dollars higher in those cities compared to markets without the same barriers and fees. I think addressing those issues and encouraging more people to join the construction trades and more new developments and affordable units to be built is going to be the best long-term solution. But I would love to know your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the real estate market. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you found it helpful. My name is Jessie McClellan and I'll see you in the next one next week. Bye.